People often criticize Elon Musk and Tesla for deciding to build a factory in China. They say it was not a wise decision. However, I think a lot of people don't fully understand exactly what is going on in China. BYD and Tesla are the beneficiaries of hundreds of millions of dollars in credits from all sides, from other car companies, from the Chinese government at a provincial level and at a national level. Now, this is how it works. And this is how Tesla and BYD stand to benefit potentially in the billions of dollars over the next three years, which will enable them to potentially crush their competition because the Chinese government is currently changing rules to benefit electric vehicle companies even more than they previously had done so. Here are the details. Here's what's going to happen. And here's why Tesla and BYD have potentially an unbeatable advantage. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm the Electric Viking. Great to see you. Welcome to all the new subscribers and welcome back everyone else. This week has been an amazing week. There's been so much happen in the electric battery world. Technology is just blowing my mind right now. I mean, making solid state potentially moot. Electric vehicles, Evergrande's latest EV, that thing, the Tesla Model Y competitor, amazing, $25,000 US dollars. If you buy one, you know, now or soon, put in a deposit of 10,000 RMB, which is like what, 1,400 US dollars. You get one for 25,000 US dollars. Comes with a 72 kilowatt hour lithium ion phosphate battery. Probably give you about 500 kilometers of real world range. It's about the same size as the Model Y. 25,000 US dollars. That thing is incredible. And that, that's just the tip of the iceberg. So make sure you subscribe so you can see everything that's going on. I don't think there's any other YouTube channel pumping out the videos, get, letting you know what's going on all across the industry, which is what you need. If you're going to make investments, if you're going to invest in the future, if you're going to get wealthy, if you're going to make wise, wise decisions, you really need to know what's going on everywhere. And also, I mean, hey, this channel is all about all the positive things that are going on in the world. Just ignore the news, we put a negative spin on everything. This is about what actually is really going on, and that is the world is getting better daily, every day. So what's going on in China? Well, CNF Post says that BYD and Tesla are the top winners under China's dual credit policy. Now, very few people in the West have heard of China's dual credit policy. I've mentioned it on this channel probably 50 times, but I don't use the words dual credit policy, so you probably don't know exactly what I'm referring to here. BYD and Tesla have actually earned 1.66 million credits and 1.4 million credits respectively in 2021. That's valued at RMB 3.5 billion and RMB 2.93 billion respectively. Now, the dual credit policy in China is one of the key forces driving the electrification transition of automakers in China. And BYD and Tesla are the biggest players. So therefore, they're the biggest beneficiaries. Now, as you know, right, we're just about to hit 30% of all vehicles sold in China as being electric. More vehicles that are electric are sold in China than the rest of the world combined this year and last year. Crazy right? One of the key reasons for that is the Chinese government. They are pushing this. Don't get me wrong, I'm not pro-Chinese government, but I'm just pointing out the reality here. They are pushing the adoption of electric cars in a way that probably no other country except Norway is doing. They are sponsoring this industry enormously. And one of the good things they're doing that the Australian government, for example, are not doing, and the US government mostly are not doing, is basically doing what Europe does, which is instituting a fine system for when you pollute too much. If you pollute too much, you have to pay fines. So companies in China actually pay Tesla, other vehicle companies pay Tesla for their credits, much as in the same way the system happens in Europe. Now, not that many people mention this because, you know, investors are very, a lot of them are very anti-Tesla. I mean, when I, when I say investors, I mean like, you know, seeking alpha, they're very sensationalist. They want you to think that Tesla's business model sucks. But the truth is part of their business model, part of the brilliance of it, and part of the reason that it was so intelligent for them to set up in China is because they knew they would be the beneficiary of hundreds of millions, potentially billions of dollars in these credits in much of the way they, the same way they've benefited from selling their electric cars in Europe. So in 2021, 129 passenger car companies in China generated a total of 6.8 million positive new energy vehicle credits. 
and 797,900 negative credits, according to information released by China's Ministry of Industry and Information Technology on the 5th of July this year. BYD, Tesla, GAC, and JAC are the top contributors of positive credits. BYD, 1.66 million credits, contributed 24% of the positive credits. Tesla earned 1.4 million just under BYD in 2021, contributing 21%. 21%. GAC was 448,700 and JAC 397,000. As background, China's dual credit policy is one of the most important drivers for the rapid development of its new energy vehicle industry. The electric vehicle industry cannot develop in its infancy without incentivized reasons to do so, right? Companies just want to keep polluting and they're just going to keep polluting unless they're incentivized to stop polluting. So the dual credit is a CAFC or Corporate Average Fuel Consumption Credit and a new energy vehicle credit combined. There's two parts to this. The policy has been in effect since April the 1st, 2018. And car companies that fail to meet the fuel consumption control requirements can offset the negative credits from excessive fuel consumption through the net credits they generate or by purchasing new energy credits from other companies. So that's what companies are doing. They're purchasing credits from Tesla and BYD. Therefore, Tesla and BYD make money for nothing, basically. Remember, right? This was, this was policy was instituted on the 1st of April, 2018. What's happened to BYD since then, right? Been four years since that happened. And since then, BYD made a plan. They saw what was going to happen. They saw what the Chinese government wanted. And they wanted to work around this plan in order to basically dominate the market, which is what they've done. They've ramped up. And this has been a key driver in their ability to fund their ramping up. If a car company is unable to get their negative credits to zero, then they need to submit a product adjustment plan to the MIIT and set a deadline for compliance. However, most of them prefer not to do this and they find it easier just to buy credits from other companies. So that's what they do. Before their negative credits are zeroed out though, products with substandard fuel consumption cannot be sold to the public. And that's the worst case scenario. Build a whole bunch of cars, they sit out in the field or they sit in a car park and can't be sold, company is not meeting its emissions requirements. The quickest and easiest thing to do, go and buy the credits from BYD, Tesla, JAC, or, G, or any other car company. Obviously, BYD and Tesla make the most EVs and plug-in hybrids. Therefore, they have the most credits to be purchased by other car companies. The MIIT previously released information showing that the average transaction price of NEV credits in 2021 was RMB $2,088 or $312 per credit. That means that if BYD and Tesla sold all the credits they received last year, they would earn 3.5 billion RMB and 2.93 billion respectively. And that's a lot of money for nothing. Now, amidst this environment, here's some context to what's happening now. China has issued measures to expand electric vehicle consumption in the country in addition to these measures, and they're hinting at an extension of NEV, New Energy Vehicle Purchase Tax Exemption. So not only these credits, right, are available for Tesla, BYD, and other electric car companies to sell to others, but also their vehicles qualify for a tax exemption. This is in addition to local state subsidies. So basically, electric cars in China usually are getting subsidized at three or four different levels, which means, right, that car companies are much more capable of developing new electric cars and focusing on this as the future of their product portfolio, moving away from internal combustion engine vehicles. 17 government departments, including China's Ministry of Commerce, jointly issued a notice yesterday that mentions support for new energy vehicle consumption and will study the extension of the NEV purchase tax exemption when it expires at the end of this year. This means that China's policies to support the auto industry, especially electric vehicles, are beginning to enter the implementation phase following a high-level meeting late last month. Chinese Premier Li Keqiang hosted an executive meeting of the State Council on June 22nd, saying the country would support the consumption of electric vehicles according to an earlier CCTV report. CNEVPost.com says that taking into account the current reality, China is studying the extension of the policy on the exemption of purchase tax for new energy vehicles, the meeting mentioned, and to support the development of new energy efficient electric vehicles, China first began exempting electric vehicles from purchase taxes in 2014, allowing most consumers who buy such cars to save about $1,600 US dollars compared to those who buy traditional fuel vehicles. Now, this is in addition to the fact that in many cities, right, it's hard to get registration for an internal combustion engine vehicle, but it's quite easy to get registration for an electric car vehicle, right? 
that's another way they're incentivizing electric vehicle adoption. So there's about six different measures being implemented in order for Chinese, the Chinese people to get away from polluting internal combustion engine vehicles and move as a country into a new cleaner electric vehicle future. The policy originally expired at the end of 2017, but it was extended to the end of 2020. And in March of 2020, China renewed the policy until the end of 2022. I think as a result, a lot of shareholders are still not confident of investing in companies like NEO and Xpeng because they believe that some of these subsidies could expire at the end of this year. They won't. The notice we issued today on measures to promote automobile circulation and expand automobile consumption, particularly electric cars, says that the automobile industry is a strategic and pillar industry of China's economy. And the move will further help stabilize the economic fundamentals and improve people's livelihoods. Basically, they're guaranteeing that these subsidies will continue next year. In addition to that, the Chinese government plans on promoting the consumption of electric vehicles in rural areas. In other words, it's going to subsidize even further electric cars in rural areas. You know how many people live in rural areas in China? About 700 million. China will also actively support the construction of charging facilities, accelerate the construction of charging facilities in residential communities, parking lots, gas stations, highway service areas, passenger and freight hubs, and guide charges operating companies to appropriately lower charging service fees according to the notice, They're incentivizing at every level. China will also remove unreasonable restrictions on the distribution of used cars and accelerate the promotion of the activity of the used car market. The country will optimize the environment for electric car use, promote the construction of urban parking facilities, and increase the use of local debt to support the construction of parking facilities. They're going to loan more money to essentially areas for electric cars to park and charge. China will develop an auto culture and tourism and other consumption and support the construction and operation of auto sports events, sports camps, and other projects in terms of land and other aspects. The country will also study and develop conditions for the identification of traditional classic vehicles and promote the development of classic car-related industries and car culture, such as display, collection, trading, and events. China plans on taking over the global automotive industry as it has done with industries like solar, right? manufacturing. It's the last bastion for China, the automotive industry, and it's the biggest manufacturing area industry in the world. This is a basically hundreds, many, many, many hundred billion dollar industry. China is putting in place plans to take over it. It wants to take manufacturing away from the US. It wants to take it away from Europe. It particularly wants to take it away from Japan. You know why it wants to take it away from Japan? Because Japan, my friends, is a low-hanging fruit. That's the easiest target to go after. First, they know, the Chinese government knows, that Japan, Toyota, Honda, Mitsubishi, Mazda, Toyota, Subaru are not prepared, are not prepared for an electric future. And my friends, I believe that is what they'll go after first. Toyota's massive market share right now will be reduced to a mere fraction of what it is today by 2040. And that is the future we're looking at. The Chinese government has a plan. I believe they'll put in place everything they need to, to make it work. Whether that's a good thing or not, I don't know. There's two sides to this. The one part of this is without China pushing the electric revolution, it would take probably 20 years longer for this to happen. But at the same time, when China dominates and owns much of this industry, well, they will have a monopoly and monopolies are not usually a good thing. That said, you know what? I just bought a Chinese electric car. I bought one at auction and I have another one coming right from BYD. And that should be here within a few weeks time. When that arrives, I'll have a review, a video out for you straight away. Probably put a live video up and just chuck it straight up on the channel so you guys can see it on the very first day that I pick it up, put it straight up on the channel. Then you can make your own mind up if you think it's worth, if you think it's good, if you think it's bad. I'm very, very excited and keen to see what you guys have to say about it. In fact, thank you for watching. Bye-bye.